I've finally made the perfect Home Assistant mobile dashboard, and it adjusts itself based on the room that I'm in. But that's only part of the magic. It has so many more tricks up its sleeve. Let's take a look. My ultimate goal is for my house to automatically do the right thing at the right time using sensors and automations. My lights turn on and off when we enter or leave a room, the temperature is automatically controlled, and most other things just happen magically but there are some times when I need to manually set things because I want the house to behave differently or because I simply haven't figured out how to automate something yet. That's when I need to use a Home Assistant dashboard. Ever since setting up Bluetooth presence tracking a few years ago, which lets my smart home know what room I'm in, I've wanted to find a way to have my default mobile dashboard automatically reconfigure itself to be specific to that room. I found it inefficient to click around the app to find the right dashboard and controls. This was meant to be a smart home, and that didn't feel very smart. For years, I tried things like the browser mod, hacks integration, and custom scripts, but nothing really worked reliably to change the dashboard based on the state of an entity. Then, just the other week, Reed from Smart Home Solver released a YouTube video showing his automated dashboards, and they did exactly what I wanted them to do. He used conditional cards to show and hide sections of his dashboard based on his location. Why didn't I think of that? Thank you so much, Reed, for unlocking this for me. I'm sure most of you already subscribe to his channel, but if you don't, then please go over there and check it out. It's one of the best home automation YouTube channels out there. I'd heard about conditional cards before, but I'd never really looked into them. Conditional cards let you set some conditions, similar to in an automation, that determine under what circumstances the card should be visible or not. You can then wrap this conditional card around groups of other cards, like a vertical stack or grid card, to show different buttons and controls based on the state of an entity. The Home Assistant developers have actually now taken this one step further and added visibility options directly into loads of their dashboard cards, so you can achieve the same effect without needing conditional cards at all, and I'll show you that in a bit. But first, let's look at what's on my new dashboard and why I think it's perfect. This dashboard loads up by default when I open up my Home Assistant mobile app. In this case, the view that I see when I'm detected in my office. The top of the dashboard remains static and always shows no matter what room I'm in. The button on the top left takes me to my original dashboard in case the new dashboard is missing something. I find myself using this less and less these days, but it's great for accessing things that I use less frequently. I might actually remove it soon and replace it with a button that activates the voice assistant or something, but I rarely use that as well. Underneath that, I have some cards that show the location of each family member. These show either the room that they're in based on Bluetooth tracking, which was the topic of my previous video, or it shows them as a way if they're out of the house entirely. Below the location tiles, I have some mushroom chip cards that show the status of things around the house. These only show up if the state of those items is in a state that is important, otherwise they're hidden. For example, some chip cards show the status of the washing machine or the dryer if they're running or unemptied, but they're hidden if they're switched off. Other chip cards show up if guest mode or holiday mode is on, and then go away when I turn those modes off. If the kitchen robot vacuum cleaner is cleaning, another conditional tile card is added to the dashboard. This lets me easily access the stop, pause, and go back home controls if I want to stop it for any reason. The card goes away again once the vacuum cleaner docks back to the base station. And finally, a camera card appears when a person is detected by the front doorbell. This means that the stream is ready and loaded before they press the doorbell, and I can quickly open up Home Assistant and see who's at the door without having to go into any special menus. This card hides itself again once the doorbell stops detecting that person. Below all of this is the area that changes based on the room I'm detected in. 
This uses the Bluetooth room tracking that I showed you how to set up in my previous video to display the right controls for that room. Each room shows the most common things that we use for that room. I found that the most useful things for me are buttons that activate certain lighting scenes, controls for the blinds and curtains, and volume controls for the main media player in that room. A big fat button at the top that turns off all the lights in that room has also been really useful. I've tried to design these dashboards to fit onto a single view of my screen, so that I don't need to scroll under any normal circumstances. This means that there are occasionally things that I want to control that aren't available here. If that happens, I can tap on the room name at the top of the card, and it loads up the full dashboard for that room that I've been traditionally using, with all of the available options to control the smart home items in that room. If I want to quickly navigate to the dashboard for a room that I'm not currently in, I can use the drop down menu at the top right hand side of the dashboard to select the room from a drop down list. If I set it to auto, then it will show whatever room Home Assistant thinks I'm in. Finally, if I'm detected as away from the home, or in a room that doesn't have tracking, it shows an overview of my entire house so I can quickly glance and see what's going on if I need to. This has been a game changer for the rare occasions when I've had to pull out my mobile phone and open up Home Assistant. The right controls always show up for the room that I'm in, and seriously, this is one of those things that just feels like magic. It does take a minute or two to switch between the dashboard views once I enter a room, but I don't usually hold my phone in front of my face waiting for the dashboard to change, other than when I'm filming a YouTube video intro. Normally, I've been in the room for a while before I pull out the phone for some reason and adjust something, and by then, the dashboard has well and truly switched itself to the right view. If I need to change something quickly, I can always use the room selector at the top. To set this up, you'll obviously need to be running Home Assistant, and you'll need some sort of room-based presence detection, so that the house knows where you are. I've made some videos in the past that show you a few ways you can do this, and they're linked in the description below. Now open Home Assistant, go to the Settings menu, select Dashboards, and create a new dashboard. Start a new dashboard from scratch, give it a name, and I'd suggest detoggling the Show in Sidebar options, then click Create. Now find the dashboard you created in the list and open it. Click on the Edit Dashboard button, and you should see that it's automatically created a view called Home using the traditional masonry type. Later in the video, I'll also show you how to set this up using the new Sections view type. I've tested both methods myself, but at the time of recording, I'm still using the masonry view for my dashboard because it works better for me, and I'll explain why later as well. Now we add some cards to the dashboard. Because this is a mobile dashboard, I'm going to use a vertical stack card as the basis for my view. This is a thinner, tall card that neatly stacks controls on top of each other, which is perfect for the screen dimensions of a mobile. If you're doing this for a tablet, I suggest using the sections view type, which I'll show you later on. Actually, I've got some pretty cool Home Assistant tablet dashboards in my home as well. You want to see a video about them? Let me know in the comments. Once you've added a vertical stack card, you can start adding cards inside this stack. The first example I'll show you is how to use a conditional card to display the vacuum cleaner controls only when the robot is cleaning. First, add and customize the card you want displayed. In this case, I'm using the tile card and adding the vacuum cleaner entity, and then adding the vacuum commands feature. Once you've set the card up how you want it, you can go to the visibility section and start adding the conditions under which it'll show. Be aware that this card will only be visible if all of the conditions you add here are true, so be careful how you set this up. In my example, I want the card to only show when the vacuum cleaner is cleaning, so I've chosen an entity state condition that checks for this. When I save this, it gets added to the dashboard, but it won't be visible because my robot isn't actually cleaning right now. You can add all sorts of cards based on all sorts of conditions. This is what I use to show the cards for my washing machine and dryer when they're running, and what I use to show my camera card if the front doorbell detects a person. It's all the exact same concept, and it forms the basis for the entire dashboard. I'll now show you how you can add cards for each of your rooms and have them appear at the right time. Start by adding another vertical stack card to your mobile dashboard. This time I'm going to create the mobile view I see when I'm in my office. You can set this up however you want, but I personally like to start with a mushroom title card that explains what room these controls are for. Mushroom cards are a collection of custom dashboard cards that can be installed via the Home Assistant Community Store. I use them a fair bit in my dashboards to customize certain things, and if you want to add them to your own Home Assistant instance, you can do it by following the instructions in the GitHub page that's linked in the description below. 
You don't need to use mushroom cards to make this dashboard. I just love their title card because it lets me set the heading up as a link. And when you tap on it, it can navigate away from this mobile dashboard to the full broom dashboard that I created previously. This gives me an easy way to get the more advanced controls for a room that I may not use that often. You then can go on to add various buttons and controls that you want to see when the dashboard for that room is visible. I've personally found that scene, music, and blind controls are the ones that I use most often. Once you've configured the dashboard as you want, you can go into the visibility section for this vertical stack card and add an entity state condition that causes the card to show up when your room location entity is set to that room name. We'll do it one more time for another room with a new vertical stack card, setting up the title and various buttons and cards we want to be displayed. And then we set the visibility conditions to only show this card when we're detected in being in the kitchen. And that's pretty much it. You can now tweak and iterate these individual vertical stack cards until they're perfect for each room. The last piece I'll show you is how to add the room selector dropdown, which lets you override which dashboard is displayed. We'll start by creating the dropdown itself by going to Settings, Devices and Services, Helpers, and then adding a dropdown helper. Give it a name, and then we can start adding options. The first option you need to add is called Auto, and you'll see why later. Then add one option for each room you created a dashboard view for earlier. Now you can go back to the dashboard and add the selector. I like to use the Mushroom Select card because it's clean and you can customize it and style it in a lot of different ways, but you can just as easily use a normal Home Assistant Entity card here. I personally find this works best when you move this to the top of your dashboard so it's easy to access. You should now see all the options you created in the dropdown at the top of your dashboard, but selecting them isn't really going to do anything yet. You'll need to go in and adjust the room cards to listen out for changes to this dropdown. What we want the dashboard to do is show the correct dashboard for my location if the selector is set to auto, or show the dashboard you've selected in the dropdown if it's set to something else. This is where it gets a bit more complex, and I have to once again thank Smart Home Solver for coming up with this brilliant solution. He was the person who I first saw put all of this together. We need to adjust the logic of each conditional card to show if either the dashboard selector is set to auto and the location is the same as that card, or we need to show the card if the selector is set to the value of that room card. Simple, yeah? To do this, edit your dashboard and edit your first room's card. Go to the visibility section and delete the existing condition. Next, add an OR condition, and inside that OR condition, pay attention to the nesting here, add an AND condition. Inside this AND, we want to add an entity state condition that checks that the dropdown is set to AUTO. We'll also need to add another entity state condition to check that my detected location is my office. This will now ensure that this card shows up when I'm in my office and have the dashboard set to AUTO. I find it easiest to now collapse the AND condition to make sure I don't put the next part in the wrong place, and then you need to add another entity state condition inside the OR section. This time, use the condition to check if the state of the dashboard selector is set to my office. So now this card will show up if either one of these two conditions matches. Either I have it on auto and I'm in the office, or it's set to show my office dashboard in the selector. You can test and troubleshoot your conditions using the test option in the kebab menu. It will show you if your condition matches or doesn't at that exact moment. Now you need to repeat this for every dashboard card, making sure you change the room values each time. Unfortunately, at the time of recording, it didn't support copying and pasting these conditions between vertical stack cards unless you copy and pasted the YAML code directly. You can save all of that and the dashboard should work as you expect. It should switch between the different rooms when you select them from the dropdown, or show you the current room that you're in if you choose auto. If you're using a section style dashboard, you can achieve the same thing in a slightly different way. For a mobile dashboard, I'd suggest changing it to a one column width, but you can use more if you're making a tablet dashboard. Create the top of the dashboard just like you did before, with the dropdown selector and any conditional cards you want at the top. Then, instead of creating vertical stack cards for each room dashboard, you just create a new section like this. Fill out the section with whatever cards and controls you want to display, just like we did with the vertical stack card, and then you can adjust the visibility conditions for that whole section. I'm using the same combination of OR and AND conditions as before, 
And the dashboard works exactly the same way as the other one. But I personally use the first method in my house. I find it works slightly better for my use case. Here you can see two of my dashboard layouts using the masonry style with the vertical stack cards at the top and the section style dashboard at the bottom. The sections view seems to create a big chunk of wasted space where the hidden conditional cards go. And that's not good on a mobile screen where real estate is limited. The headings of the sections also aren't clickable, so I still need to use a mushroom tile card. And I find the new grid system less flexible for this use case. Don't get me wrong. The sections dashboards are really awesome, and I use them a lot for all my other dashboards, but I don't think they're most appropriate for this particular job. I know the Home Assistant team is investing a lot of time into making dashboards better this year, so I expect this will only improve. I'm so happy with this new dashboard. Both my partner and I have one of these set as our default mobile view, and it's been really helpful. Just be aware that if you want to create another one for another family member in your house, you'll need to duplicate the entire dashboard and create another drop-down helper for their version. Then you need to change the entities in your visibility filters to be for their location entity, and the drop-down should be for theirs as well, and it should just work as expected. I once again want to thank Reed from Smart Home Solver for opening up this world to me. Go and support his channel, he's awesome. So what do you all think of this type of dashboard? Can you think of anything else I can add to it or change to make it better? Let me know in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, if you found this video helpful, then please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Or if you're feeling particularly generous, you can send me a super thanks or a PayPal donation to help support the channel. If you've already donated in the past, then thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It really means a lot to me. I regularly make videos about smart homes, home assistant, and automations. So if that's your jam, then why not subscribe to the channel? That way you'll know when I've released a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.